Hey, this is Jacob from MotionVFX.com and we're going to take a look at mObject 1.1. As you can see, we've got Motion running already, so let's jump into Generators, mObject, and the default mObject Generator and click Open. Once it launches, let's select the mObject Generator, go to the Inspector Generator tab, let's fold this up, and you've got your typical mObject settings here and you can already see that a couple of things are missing, especially at the bottom where you've had 10 animation layers as well as 16 QuickTime drop zones. So what happened? Well, we figured that having a bunch of settings that you don't necessarily use and have them visible all the time is not something we want. So right now when you use a single animation layer, only that one will be visible in motion. This also applies to QuickTime drop zones and text behavior settings, which we don't really need unless we've got a drop zone or a text object in that particular animation layer. So we believe that these little changes inside of the UI will help improve your M object workflow inside of Motion. As you might have noticed, we've made some changes to the M object interface as well. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, we've been adding a lot of new stuff lately and quite frankly, it has been piling up a bit. Secondly, we're trying to make our plugins as intuitive as possible. So we believe that grouping all of the existing features exactly the same way as in motion would be our best bet. So as you can see, the viewport got a little bit larger because the gray lower bar is gone and everything went up to these three list views. The scenery button remained outside mainly because we tend to use it a lot, so being able to access it at all times is definitely something you'd want. Ok, so let's check how this works right now. The lighting list contains all features related with your scene's lighting, so you've got your scenery lighting checkbox as well as the lighting presets. The rendering section, as you can see, is a bit longer. And it's just like in motion. It gathers your global rendering settings, such as enabling shadows, and we'll talk about the soft shadows in a minute. Their opacity, their resolution, enabling ambient occlusion, which we'll cover later on as well, and your typical fixed opacity settings. The texture compression setting that used to be at the bottom here has been replaced with this texture quality section, and it works kind of the opposite way. So right now, when you choose the lowest setting, all of your textures will be compressed. Picking highest won't compress any of them and the ones in between will compress textures that are larger than 1024, 2048 and 1496 square pixels. And lastly, the view list. Here you'll find all of your view settings such as displaying or hiding the scenery map, changing the viewport's background color, enabling 3D grid and helpers as well as choosing the render mode. Another new feature included in the 1.1 update are the on-screen controls. Until now you had to move and rotate your 3D objects using these transform values. And this can be problematic if you just want to quickly position your models in a specific way. That is why we have included the on-screen transformation tools and as you can see their look has been adjusted specifically for motion users. So you've got your movement arrows as well as the rotation rings that show up when you place your mouse cursor over these little circles, just like in motion. Also, when you hold down the shift button while dragging, you can move your objects by a factor of 10, as well as rotate them by a factor of 5. So this way you can align your 3D models a lot faster and more accurately than before. And one more thing, if you've got a couple of models in your scene, you no longer have to select them through the object list. Simply click on the one you need within the viewport and it will be selected. So these are the changes in mObjects interface and we hope that you'll find them as useful as we do. Ambient occlusion is a feature we've been really excited about and what it does is that it darkens a specific pixel based on its 3D surroundings. Of course this is based on real life physics. If you start to bring two planes closer together, eventually you will reach a point in which the ambient light will bounce so many times that there will be no more photons left to illuminate their entire surface. And while we are kind of faking it using the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion Algorithm or SSAO, it introduces much more depth to your scene. So let's check it out. Here we've got a simple scene with the city line model from our city pack. It's got one ambient light which simulates the skylight, one spotlight for the sun, a background gradient and a couple of post effects like depth of field, some hard shadows and here's our ambient occlusion. And you can already notice these darker areas between buildings as well as near those smaller houses. 
But I know what you're thinking. Your models already have slight ambient occlusion baked to their diffuse texture. So let's go inside our scene and disable them temporarily to see things a bit better. As you can see, our models are loading much faster than before, which is another improvement in MObject 1.1. And we've got our scene, so let's turn off the diffuse textures for all three materials and hit OK. Great, now we can see exactly what all of these settings do. First, we've got our quality presets so that you don't have to change everything manually every time you want to quickly preview your animation or the end result. But of course, you can choose custom and type in whatever fits your needs. Okay, so the samples count determines how many rays are being shot from a pixel to check its surroundings. So bringing it up will improve its accuracy. But note that this is a per pixel algorithm, so be sure to keep it as low as you can and use the ultra setting only on the new Mac Pro, which we're actually using for this presentation. The size setting controls how far you want these rays to look for neighboring surfaces. It will generate different results depending on your scene scale, so you will most likely need to adjust it at least a bit. Also, while setting it up really high can be used to fake stuff like global illumination, as in this sample scene, you can see there's a bluish tint within the shadows. Remember that SSAO is a post effect, so very large size values may produce some weird behavior near the edges of the screen, so if you really need it, remember to increase your project's resolution. This way you can crop the problematic areas in the post. Now let's go back to our city line project and another setting is intensity which of course controls the effects intensity. The blur's impact can be best seen when used with really low samples count value so let's bring everything down to minimum and now you can see the raw ambient occlusion data that we're generating. There aren't too many samples to work with so it's not that pretty but you can blur it a bit by increasing blur samples which control the blur's accuracy and blur radius which can be considered as blur amount. Remember to keep both of them as low as you can, otherwise the shadows will be too blurry and unrealistic. They will also be slower, so it's really a matter of compromise between the samples count and the blur settings. Lastly, here at the bottom we've got a color setting that can help you blend your M object scene with your background, as well as achieve some interesting results depending on the pick color. Here we've got another scene that uses ambient occlusion and turning it off flattens the image and all of these highlights that should have been darkened by these closed surfaces are still present therefore making it look fake. So you will definitely want to use ambient occlusion in most of your projects but as you can see there are a couple of other shadows down here which leads us to our next big feature, soft shadows. In the 105 update, we have included a shadow mapping feature that gave us the possibility to cast actual shadows from motion slides onto your M object scene. It provided a lot more potential to the plugin, but such hard shadows only exist when using a really strong light source such as the sun, but usually they're a bit more blurred and tend to get even softer when moving away from the object that casts them. And that is exactly what soft shadows are all about. Here we've got our old hard shadows, which you still need for a number of lighting scenarios or when time is a factor and you need to render out a really quick preview for a client. And here they are compared to our new soft shadows. As you can see, both of them are set to 1K resolution and the difference is pretty obvious. The soft one looks much more realistic, it's a bit harder closer to the model and gets softer and softer further away. And of course you no longer have to worry about these aliasing artifacts that show up especially with the lower shadow map resolutions. Ok, so let's take a look at the new settings. Of course you've got your on-off checkboxes for the whole shadow mapping effect as well as the soft shadows. Next are the quality presets which mainly change your shadow maps resolution. And again, don't use the ultra setting unless you've got a powerful graphics card with at least 2 gigs of VRAM. It's meant for really complex and high quality renders, so using medium or high should be enough in most cases. And note that you can also increase your shadows quality by simply increasing your scene scale. The larger the objects, the less artifacts will be visible. And of course this works for the hard shadows as well. Ok, so below you've got your opacity setting that controls the shadows mix amount. Then there are blur and softness settings which control your shadows map softness and the variance setting which works pretty much the same as the hard shadows bias control. It's meant for fixing artifacts such as shadows that aren't properly aligned with the object that are casting them but this also depends on your scene scale so be sure to use this feature if you experience similar effects. So these are our soft shadows, use them wisely and your projects will look better than ever. 
If you've played with M object in the past, you've most likely used it to extrude text or some of your SVG vector shapes. And while this is an awesome feature, it has been a bit slow. Well, not anymore. We've managed to optimize our 3D extrusion algorithm so now it works up to 100 times faster than before. But let's check it out. Here we've got a simple scene with a single text object, a ground plane and a couple of lights. Of course we could edit all of this using the edit text button but we've got some post effects here that we don't really need right now so let's click on the edit scene button. And as you can see the whole scene loads up much faster than before. So let's double click on the text object and play with the depth setting. As you can see, it's a lot more responsive than before. The performance impact is really obvious, so be sure to check it out on your end as well, and you won't regret it. So now you can see how fast the new 3D extrude really is. Okay, so we have covered the interface improvements, ambient occlusion, soft shadows, and 3D extrude optimizations. But that's not all. The list of changes goes on. So you've got your orthogonal view support, Manual scene clipping, which allows you to use M object with really huge scenes. Depth of field improvements, such as presets to speed up your workflow. And as you can see, the focal length value is linked with your motion camera's field of view setting. Here are your new custom autofocus point settings. Just be sure to turn off its preview before exporting, otherwise it will be present in your final render. And out of focus response time, which will slow down its reaction and fix the instant focusing effect, for example, when a new object pops up in front of your camera. We've also extended our SVG support, optimized the default M object generator template, improved interface launch times, and optimized drop zones so that they don't slow down your rendering when checking out your scene with pause timeline playback. As you can see, we've been working really hard in the last few months and we believe that this huge update will encourage you to play with M object even more. So thanks for your time and be sure to check motionvfx.com for further updates as well as more awesome content.